Horrible editing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, where was I? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, when you're smearing the outside, okay, that, that, that's fine and dandy, but it doesn't take care of the rest of the wound. Okay, the rest of the wound is that very large portion that's actually in your skin. Okay, um, and no matter how much you wish and hope and dream, this thing, this this little thing here, cannot get into the wound to clean it. You can put it in your ear, but you can't shove it into the tiny little hole that is your piercing. Doesn't, you can't do that. All right. So that means this is good for cleaning the inside of your ear. Remember, don't go too far. While you're busting your drum and removing makeup and shoving your nose and getting all the all the boogies out. Uh, perfectly fine for that. Not for piercings, with an exception. And I'll cover that when I cover uh, nose piercings. Um, there's just one exception. That's it. That's it. Otherwise, no. So take you take. And if you think about you're gonna use it, go ahead and shove it in your nose first, and then try it because that's about as good as it is. All right, so toss it away. Throw it away. Yeah. All right, so. Um. <clears throat> Doing a uh, sea salt soak is a little better than obviously trying to use Q-tip. All right, but sea salt soaks, um, and yeah, every YouTuber is like, oh, I just use sea salt soak. It, it works so good. Just no, no. If you just do that, then you're missing out on half half the the process. More than half. You're missing out on ninety percent of it. If you're just sitting there taking a cup and or bowl or whatever and then putting some salt and water in it and put your face or your ear, you know, places and call it clean. No. Nothing. No. So, um, here's, uh, here's what was taught to me nearly 20 years ago. I don't know how this fled the, fled the globe as far as like common sense. Um, but basically what you do is you wash your piercing thoroughly. I already discussed this in a previous video. Rinse it thoroughly. And then you can actually do a sea salt soak. You know, it's very common, you know, salt, water, you know. But here's the, here's the trick. All right, first, get yourself a much larger version than this. I don't have a much larger version with me right now. Uh, picnic cup, red picnic cup. We all know what they look like, right? You know, throw a, pop, you know, a little ping pong ball in it and, you know, whatever. Anyway, so, uh, take it. Take eight ounces of whichever water you want to use. Purified water, distilled water, tap water. This tap water, just run it hot until it's temperature that you actually are comfortable with. Not too hot. All right, but if you want to use anything else, purified or, or uh, distilled, take that, eight ounces, in a clean... Uh, Pyrex or microwavable dish and then minute to about a minute should probably be good test it you know if it's too hot and obviously let it cool down or add more water whatever take a quart teaspoon of salt sea salt or any regular unidized salt it should literally just say salt on the, uh, the packaging all right and then one quarter teaspoon is fine a teaspoon would be okay too no more than that uh, you do not need tablespoons of salt. More salt does not equal good. It actually equals bad. All right, it can actually burn you in such a way. Um, so <clears throat> then, what you're going to do is you're going to uh, do your soak. Okay, that means put it into that plastic disposable vessel. All right, that's the trick. It's the fact that you can throw the cup and the water away. You're not reusing it. All right, you're not reusing the water, you're not reusing the, 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 uh, the cup. Um, once you've done that, all right, 
do your soak. 10, 20 minutes is probably better, but 10 minutes is okay um, on whatever viable spot you want to soak it. All right? um, be it you know, ear, nose, lip, whatever. Um, but now where most how-to videos stop at this point, we're going to go further and tell you the truth. After you've done the sea salt soak, you need to freaking rinse the freaking soap off. Or, sorry, salt. <laughs> My bad. Uh, you're going to rinse the salt water off. If you don't rinse salt water off, well, guess what? When water and salt mix, they make salt water, right? We already discussed this. All right. Well, what happens when water evaporates from salt water? The salt is left behind. Okay. If the salt list is left behind, what it's going to do is it wants to attach itself onto uh, your jewelry. Which is why you see some people who use sea salt soaks end up having a weird kind of crusty circle and peeling skin from the actual wound. Uh, from the piercing site where the, the, the ball sits flush with, with the skin, and that's pretty easy. That's because you've turned your the ball of your jewelry into basically a globe of death or just sandpaper or whatever. Anyway, so it's scratching the outside and it causes problems. And then lo and behold, you have an infection. Not because your uh, your metal is causing the infection, but because, well, um, because metal can't cause an infection, by the way. Sorry, I just had, we're closed, so I'm sorry. Anyway, um, I was going to say, you can't interrupt it sometimes, right? Um. Yeah, metal can't really cause an infection. It can cause irritations and uh, allergic reactions. Thank you, um, but not an infection. All right, there's nothing in a metal that can cause an infection. There's no biology, kids. All right, so uh, rinse the salt water off. Move your jewelry just like you're cleaning with soap. Back and forth, up and down, whichever direction you're sitting. Um, again, 30 seconds to a minute. Should be fine. Um, once that's done, you're good. I recommend doing a sea salt soak in certain certain piercings for it. Not every piercing needs it. Not everybody needs it all the time. Uh, once a day is fine for most, most of the piercings that I recommend. Um, and if you want to know about that and want to come get a piercing from me, I'll let you know which one they are. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to cover them whenever I talk about the individual piercings or individual areas um, on where a sea salt soak is, is recommended. But So, just to cover on your aftercare, wash your hands, clean the area, move the jewelry, rinse it off, move the jewelry while you're rinsing it. And if you're going to do a sea salt soak, do it last and uh, soak it for, you know, mix it up. So remember, not too hot, <laughs> not too hot. All right, mix it up, let it soak. 10 minutes is good. And then take water from area and then rinse off all the, all the stuff. And then um, we'll enjoy and rinse it again. Oh, as you're in there. That's it. Ta-da! It's too easy yet amazing how many videos just tell you to sit there and use Q-tips, which, I mean, it's a common sense thing. They're the bane of my existence. Um, and when I have people come in and they have problems with the piercings, it's one they didn't listen to me at all. Because as soon as I, I know exactly what the hell it is. And it's, they use a sea salt solution or a piercing spray from Claire's. And use a Q-tip. Okay, there's no soap involved. There's no rinsing involved. There's no none of that, which is counterintuitive to healing a good piercing. So, there are other piercings that require other methods of cleaning, uh, but those will be discussed as and, you know, as I approach them. Anyway, my name is Jason, and thank you for watching. I apologize for the crappy editing job, but y'all have fun. And hopefully uh, you guys will, I guess, subscribe. I'm new to YouTube, by the way. Um, but if not, well, hopefully you at least got some good information. And uh, maybe I'll see you in the shop. I'll give you the lecture like I give everybody else. Uh, see you.